Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm having a go at a waterfall. And I thought I'd share a few tips and kind of my approach for how I edit waterfall photos. Keep in mind that really like every waterfall is going to be slightly different anyway. And I don't mean just the fluidity of the water and how long the exposure is, but I'm talking about the rock and the general color that's in the scene. So take these tips with a grain of salt, I guess, in terms of you know making sure that you adapt them to your particular environment. But these are the tools that I use consistently in editing waterfall photos. Here we go. This is shot in Austin a few years ago. And you know it's like, I don't know, half a second or something, but got some flowing water. But what I don't really like is like I prefer my water to be a little bluer, so I kind of want to fix that. And the yellowy green kind of color of those rocks is not really my thing. So I'm going to do a few minor things here in the uh, develop tab, and then I'm going to pop over to the uh, the effects tab and uh, you know grab some things there as well. I might pull up the midtones and the shadows just a little bit. And generally, what I do here is just cool this off. You just want to be careful; you don't want to go too far because you get that kind of look. Um, so sometimes I might double click and reset it to where it started, which was there so that I know kind of where I'm starting and then just gently kind of go left. I kind of like that. It's a little bit of a sea foam green and I'm going to do something else to kind of accentuate that. So I think I'll leave it there and then pop over to effects. And the first thing I'm going to do is get HDR look. And this is really just wanting to bring up some of the crunchiness in those rocks. And I'm going to go ahead and invert so that I can paint this in and make sure that I'm in paint in. And then I'm going to just increase my brush and just come along here and kind of wipe this HDR look across some of these rocks, most notably these ones that are kind of close, kind of towards the front of the photo and got too far down on my tray there. Let's see here. Let me get down here and do that as well. Now I'm going to go over here with a little bit bigger brush pop some of this HDR look into these rocks and then a little bit across the top as well. So there you go, got some HDR look, which I think is fine. I'm ready to move on. And the next thing I wanna do is get color balance. And really what I'm doing here is what I talked about with the blues. I want the hue and the highlights to be like 232, 233, something like that. And then I had to start dragging the amount and the highlights of course is gonna pick up the rock. So just be careful again, if you go too far, It'll become really blue, and that actually could work in some photos, but it's a little too blue for this one. So I'm going to go like, you know, maybe around 40 or something like that. And then I'm actually going to hit the midtones just a tiny bit to give them a little bit of orange uh, to start moving away from that kind of greenish color. So I'm going to do, you know, maybe, maybe something about like that. Let me turn this off and show you what we did. There it is before. You can see a more yellowy green tint to the photo overall. And after now, some of that orangey red is coming through, which I like better than the greenish yellow. I just don't really like greenish yellow unless it's uh, something that just really needs to be greenish yellow. Um, and a little bit on the highlights, which I think looks good. And now that I've um, adjusted the, the midtones, uh, especially here like under the water where the, uh, where the water's really shallow, like here in this little part of the falls, because there's so much of that color underneath, it's really kind of wiped out some of that blue. So I might come back in here and play a little bit Again, just want to be careful you don't go too far, but I think that looks pretty nice. I'm ready to move on to my next tool, which is going to be the color enhancer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start in the red, and all I want to do is kind of get the hue, uh, you know, kind of moved in the right direction. I kind of want to make it a little bit more red and maybe take that saturation down. I'm going to go into the orange and change that hue as well a bit. I'm going to go, you know, maybe over here, take the saturation down a little bit and also into the yellow and pull that hue kind of to the left. Again, I'm just trying to get a little bit more of that orange feel and less of that green feel. I also think that the orange and kind of the bluish color in the water complement each other. They go together a little bit better to me than the greenish and the bluish do because green and blue are kind of similar, whereas orange isn't exactly across from blue. Blue and yellow are more like opposites, but they're closer to being opposites, so I think they go together better. So I'm also trying to adjust it for that reason. Okay, so if I turn off, you can see there it is before, and there it is after. A little bit more of that orange tint, a little bit less of the green, and you know I think it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna move on to Tone Enhancer, which I love. I use it all the time, and what I wanna do here is kinda of work on the highlights, and so the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a luminosity mask, 
and I'll click view so you can see what that looks like. That's the default. I tend to come in here with the levels and move these around a little bit until I get something that looks about the way I want it to look and where I'm isolating more of the water, which is where really the highlights are and uh, less of the rock where, you know, it, there's not as much highlight. I'm also gonna drag this window slider a little bit to the right. You can see what that's doing. It's pulling some of those uh, rocks into a little bit darker, uh, kind of deeper territory. So what I recommend here is just kind of play around a little while until you feel like you have uh, the hi highlights isolated to the extent that you can, which again, the highlights are primarily gonna be the water in a waterfall photo, you know, unless you have sky. In this case, there's no sky, it's just rock and water. So I'm trying to isolate each of those uh, from each other, right? So now that I've done that, I wanna come in and pull the highlights up a little bit. And this is really just me trying to get the the brighter parts of the photo, the flowing water, to kind of pop a little bit. So I'm also gonna lift the white, and I'm gonna do something, you know, maybe about like that. I, you, you wanna be careful that you don't like blow out any of the highlights, but I think I'm fine there. If I turn that off, you can see before and now after. You can see it's a little bit brighter, which I think is nice. And here's a cool trick. Um, I often will go and get a different tool to kind of reduce uh, or create softness, like uh, I'll get dynamic contrast and go negative, but you can use this detail slider here and go to the left and it'll start taking, you see if I go left, it starts to look like a, almost like a painting. Uh, I went all the way left. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna come back to 100, or excuse me, reset to zero and then start dragging it. And I, I, you know, I'm only gonna go a little bit, like five or 10 or something like that, but that just softens up that water a little bit, which I think looks really nice. I just don't wanna soften it too much because there is a little bit of texture in the water where you can see the, you know, the streaks of the water and the fluid motion, and I don't wanna lose that. I don't wanna overdo it. So I just recommend being a little bit careful with that. But I wanted to isolate the water in this one. And so now I'm gonna copy this mask and I'm gonna get Tone Enhancer again. And as you can probably guess, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna invert it. And so if you look at this, the opposite of that is basically kind of the rocks. And so what I'm doing now is gonna, and it's not perfectly on the rocks, you can come in and brush and do a lot of things. And I recommend taking your time to make sure that you get it the way you wanna get it. But I'm just kind of showing you how I approach it. You might wanna come in here with levels and maybe make some further adjustments uh, or even play with a window. It just depends, I'm kind of, I'm um, hacking a little bit here, trying to see what I get, but I think I'm gonna go a little bit left there and a little bit about like that, it's close enough. So there we go, I've roughly um, isolated the rocks and what I wanna do here is I just wanna create a little bit more contrast in the photo. So I'm actually gonna take the exposure down. So if I go left, you can see it's impacting the entire photo because it is a luminosity mask. It's not a perfect uh, you know, white and black. There is gray, which means it's gonna get some of the adjustment but pulling that exposure down, I've mostly kind of isolated the rocks, but also these areas where the rock is kind of showing through the water are getting a little bit darkened, which again, I think that's kind of neat because it's actually, I think, bringing up the texture and the white parts of the water that you can see there on top of that rock. So I might just come in here and play a little bit, maybe a little bit of contrast. You know, I don't have an exact plan for this. I actually kind of like it with a little bit of contrast and maybe give back a tiny bit of exposure. Again, all I'm trying to do create a little bit of contrast. The land, I don't want a viewer to be spending any time really diving, you know, diving into the land and looking at that. I want them to dive into the water and think, wow, that's beautiful how the water comes. It's really fluid. It goes around that rock in the center and then flows off left out of frame. I just kind of want their eye to follow the water. And so I'm darkening the rock to, not to distract them, but just to keep them from focusing on it too much. Now there's a lot of rock in the photo, so it's not like you're not gonna see the rock, but I think you get what I'm saying. I'm just trying to direct the viewer's eye a little bit, and if it's darker, you're less likely to linger on it. So that's kind of my approach there. And the last thing is really just to go get a vignette. And um, I like vignettes, it's just a thing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Big Softy here, which is probably a little bit too much, but I'm gonna change the roundness. I'm gonna go a little bit to the right, maybe something about like that, and maybe increase size so it's not quite as tight, but that's also creating a little bit more viewer interest, right? It's centered on the core part of the, the center of the photo, which, you know, frankly is kind of a rock, but I think because of the difference in the light levels that we did with the tone enhancer and the uh, luminosity masking, I think you're naturally kind of following the flow of the water through the photo and the brighter parts, I think, attract attention. So I think, you know, I hope, maybe not, tell me if it, uh, if it works this way. The way I'm thinking of it is, it's a little bit brighter because of the white in the upper right corner, although the vignette kind of has taken some of that away. 
but I could mask that out if I wanted to. But anyway, it just kind of flows through and follows that photo. Anyway, that's really it. So the only other thing I might would do here is go back to develop and then look at temperature again. And do I want to go a little bit more blue overall? You know, you want to be careful. I think you don't want to go too far because you don't want to be, you know, be something like that. Uh, and I don't know where I was, but you know, maybe something about like that. And then you can also consider tint. When you have a yellowish green like that, if you drag the tint to the right, that might help. You can see as I'm dragging that, the rock there, especially that big one in the center, is kind of changing. Just again, don't go too far because you don't want a purple waterfall. You know, we're not in uh, a Dr. Seuss book here. So I've still got too much. I need to pull that back. But, you know, just consider experimenting with that. If you have a lot of yellowy green, that tent slider does wonders. And I think that's really it. Let me hit Z to get out of the, uh, the brush there. And that's my edit. Let me show you the before and after because it's a vast difference. There's the before. I mean, it's kind of pukey, greenish yellow. Yeah, just, I, I, you know, I honestly, I haven't edited the photo and I took it years ago because I look at it. I'm like, ah, I just, I just don't like it. And then um, here's the after. Very dramatic and in fact, probably too blue. So now that I've done that, Something I recommend doing is going back and forth between before and after and just checking it out to see, you know, check your work, so to speak. What's the old carpenter's rule? You, you measure twice and cut once. So, you know, measure, you know, check your work a few times before you decide that you're going to hit print. Um, but there it is before, way too greenish yellow. Just, uh, I like the idea of the photo. I like the fluid water. I even like the rock, even though I'm trying to remove viewer attention from it but i think afterwards i think i've got a much better photo and i think it's probably a little too much on the tint as well so i might pull that back just a tiny bit and the blue i'm, I'm struggling with the blue here if you can't tell i like my blue but I, I don't want it to be overly unrealistic i think i'm gonna go with that it's a video it's just an idea uh it may not necessarily land on this but if i show you what we did i mean we came a long way just making a few key things you know, a few key edits really pop the photo, I think. And that's kind of how I approach waterfalls, looking at the different textures. How do I want to direct the viewer's eye? And how do I use light and perhaps color to kind of do that? But also, um, how do I manage the, the color overall just to create the mood that I want? I'm happy with this. I think that looks pretty nice. That's my ideas for you. Hope it helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which will be coming super soon, really soon. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later and adios.